Hello there and welcome to this American Civil War epic battle report. Um, it's been a while since I've done one of these and um, so I've chosen this particular scenario straight out of the Black Powder 2 rulebook and it's the Battle of Kernstown. So this battle took place on the 23rd of March 1862 near Kernstown in Virginia. Um, so the background for this is that um, the Confederate division commanded by the famous Thomas Stonewall Jackson, um, was withdrawing along the Shenandoah Valley, aiming to block a Union army under General Nathaniel Banks. Um, Jackson discovers that Banks has split his forces with two divisions moving back towards Washington and another one staying to guard the, northern, the northeastern valley region under General Shields. So Jackson leads his men on a gruelling force march covering roughly 40 miles in just two days, so earning his men the nickname of the Foot Cavalry. And um, on the morning of the 23rd, Jackson was near Kernstown and planning to attack anything in blue, basically. Um, so unfortunately for Jackson, though, due to some of the some poor intelligent, intelligence gathering, he's unaware that his force of 3,000 men will soon be attacking over 6,000 of Shields Division. So um, this is actually, historically, Jackson actually lost this battle. Um, Albeit, I think you know, I think historians say that although it was a defeat for him, he's one and only defeat on the battlefield. It was a kind of strategic victory for the Confederates, as the Union then had to divert troops from the peninsula and send in reinforcements into the valley, etc. So, and also Jackson went on to successfully lead his army against um, superior Union forces on several key battles. So, um, so it's an interesting battle. I'll come on to the deployment and the forces shortly. Um, but this is a quick overview of the battlefield. So we're just on the edge of Kernstown here, on the edge of the board here. This is Hogs Run, or Hog Run, which is a uh, fordable river. Um, and then there's various features on the battlefield, some um, high ground here, um, which I'll discuss as we go through the deployment. Okay, so I'll go over and do that right now. Okay, so that's the initial deployment done. So what I'll do now, I'll just run through the how the game's going to run and what are the kind of victory conditions that uh, are set out within the scenario. Um, so firstly, uh, the Union were north of Kernstown and they were already deployed, or the majority of them were. Uh, now Shields was actually wounded in a previous skirmish, so the Union has, hasn't actually got a commander-in-chief. Normally I have a general on the, on the board who can buddy up with one of the brigade commanders and provide command rerolls. Now he's not there, so each brigade commander for the Union are basically on their own. Uh, and so whatever they roll, they roll. Um, the, in the centre here was Kimball. Now Kimball was actually the de facto leader of the division in the absence of shields, and he had a very strong brigade. <coughs> so he's got four infantry regiments and also two batteries of six guns here. These are 12 pounders. Uh, he's command rating of eight. So very strong uh, centre for the Union. And this is Pritchett's Hill, which was, was some high ground to the north of Kernstown. On Kimball's left, he's got Sullivan. Sullivan's command rating of seven. And he also got three regiments of infantry with a four gun battery. And then on Sullivan's left is Broadhead, who's got the cavalry brigade. Uh, he's, he's command rating of eight. And he's got two small cavalry regiments and two tiny cavalry regiments. So um, they're the, that's the deployment for the Union uh, at the start of the game. There is one other uh, brigade under Tyler that will come on uh, later in the game based on a set of. Uh, scenario rules around how the Confederates are doing in the battle, which I'll explain later. And for the Confederates, it's just this small cavalry brigade under Ashby, who's command rating of eight. So he's just got two tiny regiments of cavalry, um, and they just started to the east of, of Kernstown. So, um, as I said, the battle will be, uh, it's basically an attritional battle, so uh, for victory conditions, either side's got to break the other. Um, and again, I'll talk you through that as the game goes through. But effectively, the Confederates are attacking here through Kernstown, up into this um, central area to try and uh, break the Union forces. All of the Union regiments, infantry regiments are large. I'm only using three stands for the game, um, but they're all large regiments. And the Confederates, so although they're smaller, they're standard infantry regiments, they've all got the Elite, elite 5 Plus and the Rebel Yell rules. So Elite 5 Plus means they can recover disorder on a 5 Plus in the command phase, and the Rebel Yell gives them a reroll in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So effectively, it's like an elite, so basically Jackson's force is kind of an elite force against this larger Union force who haven't got their divisional commander in place. Okay, so I think that's the main uh, points of the game. So we'll head straight over now to Confederate turn one. 
Okay, so that's the end of um, the first term of Confederate movement. And so uh, Jackson has brought, brought on all of his, uh, his division onto this uh, left flank. Um, as you see, he's obviously trying to make a left sweeping movement across to the Union. Um, so in the centre here, you've got um, Jackson himself, and that is actually the Jackson model from uh, Warlord Games as well. So he's there, and he's buddied up with his uh, brigade commander, which is Garnet. And it's quite a big brigade. You've got three. These are all Virginian uh, regiments, by the way. So you've got three here, and you've got two here in uh, March Column. And he's got a huge artillery uh, contingent. He's got a six-gun battery at the front there and then two four-gun batteries. I always represent six guns with three stands and four guns with two stands. So we've got a, a six and a four and a four. On his left is Falkerson. It's a smaller brigade of two regiments here that have come on in March column. And also he's got a four-gun battery there. And then on the, his kind of right of centre is Burke's brigade, which is again quite large. Got four infantry regiments there and a four-gun battery as well. Uh, unfortunately, Ashby failed his command role, so the cavalry just stuck where they are. So clearly, um, Jackson's showing his hand on the first term um, on the left. So let's see what the Union, how they respond to this uh, initial move from the Confederate forces. Okay, so that's the end of term one movement for the Union. Clearly, they're having to try and push round now to, to counter this strong left position from Jackson. Now, in the scenario rules, um, the Union commanders are all hesitant um, at the start of the game. It does, that can change if things happen during the game. And hesitant just basically means if you roll your command roll and you get up to three moves, you have to re-roll it. And it just represents the fact they weren't quite sure where Jackson was or the strength of the Confederate army. So unfortunately, Broadhead, with his uh, large cavalry brigade here, was looking to sweep his cavalry round this way. Um, but he rolled a, what do we roll, a four? which meant we could get three moves. So because he's hesitant, I had to re-roll that and, re and rolled an 11. So they're just stuck where they are. Uh, Sullivan in the centre here, he managed to get one move, so just swung his uh, regiments around. And in the centre, Kimball, all he really managed to do was just get the two um, uh, six-gun batteries to move forward one move. Um, these are large 12-pounders. And then he also managed to get a pot shot off at um, this at Burke's regiment down here because they're within 48 centimetres, which is the range of those guns. But failed to do any damage and then he basically failed his other order uh, to try and move um, his, reg his infantry measurements so they're just stuck where they are. So not a lot of movement for the Union but obviously um, they're trying to just counter this left strong left position from the, the Confederates. So over to turn two. Okay so that's the end of turn two for the Confederates so I'll just quickly run through how that movement went. So on this extreme left flank here Falkerson's brigade made three moves around towards this high ground. Um, because they're in March column and the artillery are limbered, this is why they're facing backwards, I always show them as limbered facing backwards, they were able to get three moves and sweep around towards that high ground. Garnet had a bit of a nightmare. Um, he tried to order his artillery to swing up and unlimber. Um, he rolled a double six, which is a blunder. Fortunately, um, he had Jackson in tow for the re-roll, but rolled a double six again. I couldn't believe it. So two double sixes in a row. Um, and then he rolled and got two moves closer to the enemy. So actually, it kind of worked out how Garnet was planning it anyway, but um, which could have been worse. Um, so these got stuck then because they couldn't, he couldn't order them. And because these were in March column, they just got one free move. So they just moved at one move there. Over here, again, similar uh, for Burke. He blunt, went and blunder, but he failed his command roll. Um, so his, his limbered artillery, they'll get a free move. So they just came around the church here and just start to move towards there. And then a real tough decision about what to do with Ashby and this small cavalry brigade. Although I did forget, he has got um, some horse artillery. Um, I've got a little horse there just to uh, show that they are horse artillery. I forgot all about that. So I added that to his unit. And so I thought, you know what, they're gonna swing this way and try and just kind of provide some bit of a nuisance and annoyance for this, uh, this uh, Union force coming across here. So I managed to get three roll, three moves off. So they've just also, because um, they are cavalry, they got to uh, dismount, so they're now dismounted cavalry. So they're basically skirmishers now. And also horse artillery get a free move. So you get a free move to dismount, and horse artillery get a free uh, move to unlimber as well. So that wasn't too bad either. So that's the end of the Confederate turn to movement. So no shooting on this turn, so over to the Union. Okay, so that's the end of turn two for the uh, Union. 
Um, now, if you've watched any of my other battle reports, I normally show the dice rolls for shooting and hand-to-hand -hand combat, etc. But because of the size of this game, um, it's due to go up to 12 turns, which is a, lot, a big game for me. I normally five or six. So these early uh, turns are very much about that, man that manoeuvre. So I'm not filming any of the shooting until we get into a little bit further into the, the action, I guess. Um, so down here on, on the left here, so Broadhead. Um, now, again, these are still all hesitant. Um, for a while, so uh, he did actually get three moves for his first roll. So again, he had to re-roll because he's hesitant. But fortunately, he managed to get two. So he managed to get the cavalry to move around two moves. Sullivan um, didn't have a great go either. He managed to get one of his infantry regiments to make one move around here to try and get some fire down on this regiment here. But then he failed the rest of his orders. So they're stuck where they are. Uh, in, but in the shooting phase, these did fire actually, and um, but failed to hit. So uh, and then in the centre, Garnet. Um, Similar, he's still hesitant, so he managed to get his two artillery units to, uh, uh, to move forward. Now, uh, in American Civil War, you can only fire if you either stay still or move, have moved once. If you move more than once, um, you can't fire. So they were able to shoot, which I'll come on to that. But then he was trying to get the rest of his infantry to kind of sweep around a little bit and start to, I guess, face up against this uh, Confederates coming across here. But again, failed his command roll. So they're all st st stuck there just waiting for, for orders. In the shooting phase, this six gun battery shot down here and managed to score a casualty against that limbered artillery. And then this six gun battery here fired across here and again got a casualty and also a disorder. So a little bit of fire now coming across onto the Confederate lines, um, but uh, it's still early days, so over to turn three. Okay, so it's the end of turn three for the Confederates and it's a pretty good turn. So in summary, Again, this left flank's going well. Fulkerson, again, managed to swing his uh, brigade around with three moves to start putting pressure on this flank of the Union force here. And th there was some um, barricades here. I've just moved them because I don't think they're going to add much to the game anyway, so they're gone. Um, so they've got the high ground here on the left. Um, Garnet, yeah, even with Jackson, he's still struggling to get a lot of manoeuvrability. It's a, it's a big old brigade to move around. So he managed to get the, uh, this, um, these obviously can't move because they're disordered. He managed to get this battery of guns through on one move and uh, on limber. Um, but he failed his first order, so that took his command re-roll. Then he managed to get the, this uh, battery around and unlimbered. And then these made two free moves because, again, he, he, he failed his roll for these. So this big, this big uh, wedge of three regiments here is still stuck waiting for orders, despite Jackson being um, in their vicinity. Uh, however, the centre went really well for Burke, so he managed to get his, um, his battery unlimbered and then got all three reg uh, four regiments to move up um, into close range with the artillery there. They can't shoot this turn because of um, moving more than once, but that was uh, putting pressure on that centre. And again, Ashby on the right had a really good turn, managed to get his skirmishers just to swing around a little bit, put some skirmishing fire into this uh, regiment here, plus the horse artillery chipped in as well and managed to get three casualties so that's pretty good I mean it's a large unit so they've got one casualty before they're shaken but a really good turn of shooting for them over here this battery did try to shoot but no casualties and again because they only made one move they fired as well but again no casualties so good turn for the confederates putting really good pressure now onto that center um, so let's go over to union turn three and see how they can respond okay so that's the end of the uh, union turn three so broadhead um, didn't have a great role, but managed to get his cavalry just to sweep around a little bit further. Sullivan really stuck here, so he's only got a command rating of seven. There's no commander in chief to come and support, and basically he failed to manoeuvre any of his troops off. He, he rolled an eight for his first order, so everything's kind of just stuck where it was. So not particularly good. However, in the centre here, Kimball finally managed to get a decent roll and uh, get his infantry to spread out and start to defend the. Uh, Pritchett's uh, Hill here and also his artillery just shuffled around a little bit to under initiative um, just to get better lines of fire onto these two uh, onto the regiments here in terms of shooting wise so this unit uh, this six gun battery shot down into the front unit there scored a casualty and a disorder and then again this six gun battery fired down at uh, their counterparts over there and scored a casualty as well so not a lot of damage coming through, but the lines are starting to form now. Um, the Confederates are starting to squeeze into the center. Um, this left flank of the Union is still not particularly engaged at this time. Um, so we'll move on to turn four. Okay, so that's the end of turn four movement for the Confederates, and it was a really interesting turn. Lots went on. I'm gonna have to see if I 
can remember everything because it was quite uh, quite complicated. Uh, and what I'm going to do on this particular f uh, turn is start showing some of the dice rolls for shooting. And we have got a bit of hand-to-hand -hand combat as well, which is great. So we're getting to the uh, the juice of it now. So let's see what I can recall. So in terms of Falkerson, um, he decided to uh, basically um, unlimber his artillery and also got his two regiments into line um, to start facing off against the, the Union here. Um, I'm not sure that was tactically the right thing to do. I think I should have maybe kept them in march and maybe swung them further around the flank. But anyway, I'd, I'd done that, so that was where it was. Um, down on the left here, what it meant was that Jackson and Garnet had to make some decisions about um, this large brigade because this centre bit here is starting to get very squeezed. So in the end, decided throw caution to the wind, got the units up into march column, and then just basically start to move up this uh, bit behind Fulkerson. So almost a bit of a role reversal, really. This, this large brigade is now going to start moving up in this direction. This is some of the artillery from Garnet's brigade as well. They just managed to kind of re uh, maneuver around here to get some shots up here. Um, this is where, again, I think I made another bit of a tactical error here. So basically, this unit was disordered because I couldn't do anything. Um, so the unit behind, because they were in the flank arc of this artillery battery, decided, well, if I can charge up there, I'm not going to get closing fire. Uh, and also, with um, the rules in American Civil War, um, you can't charge on initiative, you have to be ordered in. And if you charge to the front, it's a minus two command modifier. And to be fair, it's a, five, uh, a six gun battery, so you don't want to be charging them anyway. So I thought, actually, going this way, I'm going to avoid the closing fire, because I can't fire sideways and also I don't get the minus two command modifier. And as I did it and I rolled and I got in, fine, I was patting myself on the back and then I, then I did realize, remember there's another um, rule around traversing fire. So if you go past a, an enemy unit, they get a chance to fire. And of course, they because they charged this way, they went right past this other unit of guns. And I couldn't really um, just roll back time to, so I thought, you know what, they're just going to have to take it. So these got a face full of um, cannon fire as they came through and uh, got shaken and whipped. So basically, they, uh, they're now out of the battle effectively. Um, whipped's a rule that's for American Civil War. Um, you don't destroy units if they've been um, broken under fire. Uh, they become whipped, so basically they're just retiring there. So that's the first Confederate regiment uh, down, unfortunately. Um, so then over on this side, Ashby decided, um, well, what I'm going to do now then, I'll see if I can charge that battery with those some skirmishers here. So they basically charge in again on the flank of, of, that, of those battery. Now, skirmishers can charge. Um, and again, uh, because they're charging from the side, um, there was no need to do the minus two command modifier, so they got in. Then he just maneuvered the skirmishers over here onto this side just to close that gap there. So a lot went on. Um, a few tactical errors, I think, uh, on my behalf. But still, the Confederates are in a decent position and they've still got some good firepower coming in now. We've got a large brigade moving around here and also, crucially, maybe these skirmishes can do some damage on that uh, artillery battery in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Okay, so we're gonna head over to shooting. Okay, so we're gonna start the shooting over this side. So this uh, artillery battery is gonna fire across into this regiment here. So they are still at long range, just slightly. So it's only gonna get one dice. And that's going to be hitting on a five because of a long range. There's no hits there. And then the infantry regiment's got three dice and they're going to shoot into the same regiment. So that's three dice this time hitting on fours. That is one hit and a disorder. Six is a disorder in, in shooting. And a four save. Save of four required. No, so that is one casualty on that unit there. I'll, put it, I'll just put it there so I know it's for them. And then also a disorder marker. So that one at the front is, is done. Uh, and then we'll come over to these guys here. And onto these four gun batteries here. So they're both going to be shooting through at this six gun battery here. Um, they are just in medium range. So both get two shooting dice. So I might as well roll them all together. So it's going to be four dice, but they are shooting at deployed artillery, which are not a clear target. So it's minus one to hit. So it's going to be fours becomes fives. So four dice hitting on fives. Just the one hit. And then because it's in medium range, it's minus two to the save. So a save of four becomes a save of six, which just doesn't make. So that becomes one casualty onto, onto these guys here. Okay, so just moving around. 
So Ashby's Brigade here, so we'll start with the skirmishers. Um, because they're a tiny unit, they just get one shooting dice and they can be shooting across here. So that's one dice hitting on a four, which they do hit, and it's a four save. They need this, which they make. And then the horse artillery, we've got two, because uh, of medium range again, you're getting two shooting dice hitting on fours. And there it is. So they need a six. So this could be a shaken unit. Yes, it is. So that's another casualty. So that puts them up to uh, four casualties. So that is their stamina limit because they're a large unit. So they are now shaken. That's the first shaken union unit. Okay, so that's the end of the shooting phase. Yeah, nothing else to shoot. Um, so we'll move over to this quick hand-to-hand -hand combat here with the skirmishers and the artillery. Okay, over to this hand-to-hand -hand combat then. So the tiny uh, Confederate uh, unit of dismounted cavalry get two hand-to-hand -hand dice and the artillery battery gets one um, there's a few things going on here so they because they charged in um, they get a plus one for charging but because they're skirmishers they're minus one so they're still hitting on fours and because the artillery is being charged to its flank um, you get minus one to them so they're hitting on five so it's basically two dice hitting on fours and one dice hitting on a five so we'll do the confederates first so two dice hitting on fours. That is one hit. And then for the union, one on five. So that is no hit. Okay, and then for the unions, one save of four, which they make. So, uh, so there's no casualties on that, and those guys are locked in combat. Okay, so I'll just come back for an end of term summary. So just a quick end of turn four summary for the Confederates. So just firstly take this uh, disorder off that unit there. So I think it's been okay. I think obviously they lost their first unit really that's whipped. But crucially now this battery here is shut down by, the, by these uh, dismounted cav. And you know Jackson's trying to get a bit of uh, maneuverability around the flanks as well. So um, it's okay but still a long way to go yet. So I'll move over to turn four for the Union. Okay so that's end of turn four moving for the Union. Uh, this left flank of the Union is still struggling. Sullivan's only command rating 7, so he failed his first dice roll. And again, there's no commander-in-chief to help him out, so they're just a bit stuck. Uh, Broadhead managed to get one move off from his cav, so again, they're slowly getting round, uh, coming towards Ashby's brigade here. And then in the centre, Kimball um, decided to be aggressive, so he took two regiments off his line, started to advance towards the flank of uh, uh, Falkerson's brigade here again I think he's noticed oh he did um, because this unit here was whipped and failed a break test uh, he's no longer wavering so that was one of the uh, rules so um, yeah so he's command rating eight with no wavering now so he managed to move two regiments round and then this six gun battery just adjusted itself on, on initiative just to get a better line of sight onto here okay so let's go over to shooting for turn four for the union Okay, starting off on this side, the cavalry, uh, while they're mounted, have only got a six inch, uh, sorry, six centimeter range for their pistols, so they're out of range. But this unit can fire down either the artillery or the um, dismounted cav. They're both not clear targets, so that's minus one. Yeah, they're good, so they're going to go for the artillery. And they're also shaken, so that's another minus one. So it's going to be four shots, because they're a large unit, hitting on six. That's no hits. Okay, so then we'll come across to the center. This large battery here is going to shoot down here, so they're just, just out of close range. So they're hitting on a four and three dice at this range. That's two hits and a disorder. And that's going to be two saves of uh, six plus because they're in medium range. You get minus two to your save. That is actually one save, so that's another casualty onto that unit there. And they're also disordered as well. Then we'll come across to the infantry. We'll start with this uh, large unit here, so you're going to get four shooting dice shooting across at this unit. Um, they are disordered, so that's minus one to their shooting, so they'll be having four shots hitting on fives. That's one hit and one save of four required, which they do make. And then we'll go to this unit here, it's going to shoot at the artillery. Um, again, they're not a clear target, so again, it's going to be four, four dice hitting on fives. So again, union of all large units. That is just one hit and a disorder, and one save of four required, which they do make, but they are disordered. Um, I'll put a marker on there in a second, but I think that's the end of all the shooting on turn four. 
So not a huge amount going on really for the Uni at this stage. So heading over to turn five for, uh, we'll take this disorder off first actually, and put that on there. Uh, there we go, that's easy. So, um, so yeah, so we'll head over to turn five for the Confederates. Hold my horses, I did forget this hand-to-hand -hand combat because these were still locked in from last round, so they need to fight again. So this time the Confederates, um, are, we've got again got two hand-to-hand -hand dice, but they've, they've not charged this time, so they're going to be hitting on fives because they're skirmishers, because you get um, minus one for being a skirmisher. And again, the artillery are also minus one because they are being attacked with their flank, so they got one dice. So it's one dice for the Union on five. And they do hit, now it's a six, but there's no disorder in hand-to-hand, -hand, so that's one hit. And then two for the skirmishers. No. Uh, can the skirmishers save on a four? No, so they do take a casualty. Okay, so they are actually shaken as well because they've only got a stamina of one. So they will be testing. So we'll do that straight away. So it's just going to be two dice and they need to roll high. Seven is okay, so they're going to be stay and locked in combat. Um, but the artillery did win, so there we go. Okay, so over to turn five for the Confederates. Okay, so that's end of turn five movement for the Confederates. So uh, this left manoeuvre by uh, Garnet and um, Jackson continues. So they've got three moves off, so they've really swept around this flank now towards this side of the Union line. They're still in march column, and the uh, artillery is still limbered. Uh, in the centre here, um, Fulkerson just stayed where he was. Obviously that unit there is uh, disordered anyway. Um, over this side, Burke just managed to get his artillery limbered up and started moving because to be honest, they had no targets anyway, so try and get them a bit more in the battle. Those artillery stay where they were. And similarly here, Ashby's just holding the line here. Um, this flank's not really moving, so he's causing a lot of trouble for such a small unit. And also, potentially can get a, these to be testing um, after the next shooting phase. So, so that's the end of movement, so we're over to shooting. Okay, so starting with Ashby, so we're going to, we might as well start with the artillery. So the, again, doing medium range, they're getting two dice, hitting on fours. That is one hit, and again at medium range, that's minus two to the save, so comes a six. There it is, so they're now one over their stamina, on five. So they will be testing it in this phase, but we've also got this, um, this dismounted cavalry unit here with one dice shooting in. And again, that is a uh, four to hit. No hits there. Okay, so we'll do that testing at the end of the shooting phase. So moving across to the centre. So this unit at the front here will be shooting through to the uh, deployed artillery there. So because they're disordered, it's minus one. And again, minus one for not shooting at clear targets. So it's going to be three dice hitting on sixes. That's the opposite of that. So there's nothing there. And then we've got the two artillery pieces here, the two foreground batteries shooting in again. So that's going to be four dice hitting on fours, uh, fives, because it's again, not a clear target. Just the one, but that is a disorder. And because it's medium range, that's going to be a six to save, which they don't make. So they are now disordered. They're also shaken. So though they've got three stands, it is actually a stamina of two for these units. So, um, so yeah, so they're shaken as well. So that's, uh, that is a good result. Um, they won't be testing though, unfortunately. Uh, and then we'll move over to this flank here. Okay, starting with the artillery here. Now the, they are gonna shoot at this unit here. They're not quite in their front arc. Uh, they're, not, they're more than 50%, so they're not gonna be a clear target. Um, but they are in medium range, so that gives them two shots. Um, so it's going to be minus one for not being a clear target and minus one for the disorder. So that's going to be two shots hitting on sixes. No, so it doesn't matter anyway. And then this regiment in the middle here is going to be shooting across these guys again. So again, three dice, but this time hitting on fours. Okay, it's one and disorder. And knocking the trees over and one save of four which they do make, but they are again disordered. This vision at the front here. Um, so I think that is the end of the shooting phase. So we'll take off the disorder here for this unit. By the way, um, I know they said these were Elite 5 Plus, um, but I've been rolling, but not uh, off camera. So, but I've not been rolling a five, so they've stayed disordered. 
um, and the artillery aren't elite anyway, but this comes off because it's the end of the turn. So again, not a huge amount. Oh, we need to do the, sorry, forgot. we've got to do the, the uh, test over here, haven't we? So let's quickly do that. So what are we saying? So they are, uh, it's just gonna be minus one for um, the excess casualty. And also they did suffer a casualty from artillery. So that's gonna be minus two to their roll. So they need to roll high. Uh, they're doing so 11 becomes a nine so that they're, not, they're fine so that comes back to a four uh, so that's the end of the shooting phase so a bit disordered across the line not too bad again this this flank's really being held up now um so just over to this hand-to-hand -hand combat this ongoing combat now obviously the union won that last time so we'll come back for that okay for the hand-to-hand -hand. and by the way i, I do realize the disorder i should take it off the end of the turn but uh, i keep forgetting we've got hand-to-hand -hand combat Anyway, right, so once again, we've got two dice for the Confederates. Um, they are shaken, so that's going to be two dice, but hitting on fives because they're shaken. And then for the Union, uh, they got one dice, again, being attacked to the flank, so it's normally a five. But because they've won the last round of combat, they get a plus one, so they are hitting on a four. So we'll do the Confederates first, so two dice hitting on fives. Nothing, and then one dice hitting on a four. Nothing. So that's going to be a draw. Now, because it's a draw, um, and because these are still shaken, they've got a test. So again, it's going to be two dice rolling high. Eight is fine. So again, they're locked in combat. This time it was a draw. Okay, so that is the end of turn five for the Confederates. So we'll move swiftly over to turn five for the Union. So that's the end of a very successful and aggressive turn for the Union. Um, over on this right flank, Broadhead finally whipped up his cavalry into a charge. And crashed into the side of the uh, horse artillery here um, so yeah and the rest of them came up in support as well so it's not looking too good for Ashby now um, again slight tactical error actually maybe should have checked the range but there you go it's one of those and then Sullivan finally got his act together managed to get the two regiments here into March column and moving limbered up his artillery as well all helping with his command ratings now so he's going to get plus one moving them around, which is going to help. And finally, he managed to rally off a casualty on this unit here. So that shake and mark has come off. So Sullivan's had a good turn. He's finally woken up, which is good. And then across in the center, obviously not much movement here, but this was the really aggressive move by Kimball. He's caught again the, the Confederates napping a little bit. Um, because the artillery are not formed yet, he was able to get a charge off without the command modifier. So a uh, bit of a gamble, but managed to get that unit in and the Zouave unit behind into support. So that's again that limbered art unlimbered sorry, limbered artillery are going to be in a bit of trouble now with uh, um, that charge coming off. So yeah, uh, interesting. Let's see how we get on with some shooting as well. Okay guys, so this is a bit of a, um, a summary of the shooting phase of the Union because I did it all off camera in the end. There wasn't much to do anyway. Um, but this unit shot, this large unit shot here, uh, these dismounted cav, uh, who they're now disordered, shaken, because they've only got one stamina, the last one casualty. So that brigade is now actually broken. Ashby's brigade has been broken this turn. So we'll come back to that because we've still got the hand-to-hand -to, -hand to do, and here. Um, these fired down here, but missed. The disorder didn't help, so they missed all their shots. And similarly here, these are disordered, and they missed all their shots as well. So not a lot happening on the shooting phase of Union. So we'll swiftly go across to hand-to-hand. Okay, so starting off over here, I mean, I think it's a bit one-sided, but we'll, I'll film it anyway because it looks quite dramatic with the cavalry charging into the artillery. So um, it's this front regiment here in contact. This is a small unit, so they're getting five hand-to-hand -hand dice. They get four plus one. There's some optional rules in Glory Hallelujah, which is a supplement for ACW from Warlord Games. So you can have one or two dice to cav, so I'm doing one, so five attack dice. They're hitting on threes because they're charging in, so that first. So they're all hit, that's five hits for the cav. I told you it's been one-sided. And then the artillery get one back, hitting on a five, because again, they're being charged to their flank, which they do actually hit, but that's five saves of four for the artillery. So that's three casualties go through, and one save of four for the Union cav, which they make. So that's gonna be, that puts them up to four. So that is, they are now shaken. So they will be testing. So it's going to be two dice for the loss of combat. Um, two dice and minus two for the accept casualties. So a seven becomes a five. So they will be, I think they're destroyed. Yeah, because they're artillery. So they're destroyed, basically. Um, and that brigade is broken anyway. I won't bother filming this particular fight. 
Um, they are stuck in hand-to-hand, -hand, but I can't see much happening there, so I'll, but I'll do that off camera. And then we'll come across for the fight over here. Okay, so over to this fight here. So the unit, the Union Regiment is a large regiment again, so they're getting a whopping eight hand-to-hand -hand dice against the one for the uh, limbered artillery there. So this, again, looks like it's going to be pretty one-sided. So again, it's going to be eight dice hitting on threes, so they're charged in. That is seven, a whopping seven hits there for the Union. And then we get one attack back for the artillery. But that is one hit though, they are hitting on fours, because it's because they're not attacked to their flank, um, there's a frontage there, they're fine with that. So we'll do the saves for the Confederates first, so seven saves of four required. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So just one casualty out of all that. Okay, and then we've got one save for the Union, which they don't make. Interesting, right, okay, so... Uh, so there's one casualty each, so the way this works is it's one casualty for the Confederates, one for the Union. <coughs> However, the Union are supported by the Zwarov's Regiment here, and unfortunately artillery can't be supported. And even if this unit was could support, it's in March Column, so March Column can't support either. So the Union did win that because they add plus one to that, so they've become a two. Okay, so the Union win. So it's close, that's pretty interesting. So let's add the casualties. So they get one casualty added onto them, makes them two. These get one casualty added onto them. Um, the trees over again. That actually makes that unit, uh, that unit shaken as well. So they'll be testing. So let's do their test now. So it's just gonna be two dice. They haven't got any excess casualties though, so it's just gonna be two dice and it's really good on. A six, that's it, they're gone as well. So they're destroyed. Um, so that's that unit wiped out. And over here as well, um, in this fight here, that small, uh, that tiny uh, dismounted cavalry regiment actually lost their combat as well. And then uh, in, they tested and uh, are retreating away. So, um, but obviously that's, uh, that whole brigade's broken anyway, so. Okay, so that's the end of hand-to-hand -hand phase on that, that turn. So pretty devastating for the Union in terms of uh, inflicting damage on the artillery at least for the confederates so over to turn six for uh, the rebels okay so it's end of movement for confederates from turn six so ashby's brigade is now retiring from the field so they're just retreating off the board um burke got into real pickle about what to do because now this flank is open here um remember one of the victory conditions for the union is to union is to break burke's brigade he's already got one unit whipped um so it was a bit not sure what to do here because you've got two full batteries now bearing down on him so he's not going to be attacking those he's got all this force coming this way so decided to try and see if he can shift around a little bit and provide a bit of a blocking force uh, failed his role so the most he could do was uh, these guys came back off initiative first just moving back a little bit and these use their free move to unlimber so they're facing that way that was about it for Burke so Burke's in a bit of a sticky spot there Falkerson managed to move his uh, a brigade forward a bit further, um, inching towards um, some of Garnet's troops there. Artillery still down here with line of sight there. And then over here, um, Garnet and Jackson combined managed to get the two front regiments into line and then the back three regiments just to start moving around in a flanking maneuver as well. So we're going to start seeing some engagements over here. So we'll move over to Confederate shooting phase. Okay, so we'll start with this front regiment here. So they get, they're in close range. So they're getting three dice um, and they're hitting on threes because they're plus one for being in close range. So just the one hit, unfortunately, but that, that is a disorder though. And then one save of four, which they don't make. So that's, at least that's something, that's, just, that's another additional casualty there. And they're also disordered. Okay, so let's end of the shooting over here. Then we'll go over to Fulkerson. Okay, so we'll start with the four gun battery there. They're now in medium range. So they're getting two shots, uh, hitting on fours. Oh, that's not good. And then the regiment at the front there has got three shooting dice on fours. Just the one, so it's not great shooting from the Confederates, so four required. No, but is a casualty coming through. So they're slowly chipping away at that front regiment there, but um, not amazing. And then we'll come down for the artillery. So once again, we'll combine the fire of these two four-gun batteries into 
that uh, battery there. So that's going to be four dice hitting on fours. Again, not great shooting, just the one hit and a save of six required. No, so that does mean there will be testing. So one over there, stamina. And then we'll come down for this shooting. So this regiment at the front is going to be shooting at that artillery as well. So they are still deployed. So it's going to be three shots hitting on fives. That's much better. So two hits and a disorder. That's what they wanted. So two saves, a four. No, so that is another two. This could be interesting now because that's going to put them uh, three over their stamina. They're also disordered. So we'll come back to that to see what the... Uh, when they did their test, but we've got another bit of artillery down here. Okay, so it's this Burke's artillery here just firing across at the cavalry, this front regiment here. So they are just in medium range, so it's going to be two dice hitting on fours. Just the one hit, and again a save of six required because at medium range. No, so that is actually a casualty on that front um, regiment. Now also, this unit here, although they are retiring, uh, can still shoot, I believe. So let me just check the rules and I'll come back. Yes, so although they're retiring, they can still shoot, and they are in range of that uh, lead cavalry regiment, so they get one shot. They will be hitting on a six, but we'll give it a go. No, missed anyway. Okay, so that's the end of the shooting, uh, that's the end of the turn for Confederates. There's no hand-to-hand -hand combat. So, yeah, we'll move on to Union turn six. No, apologies, I keep forgetting these brake tests, so obviously the, this Union uh, battery needs to test. So, um, they are disordered. So that is minus one from their test. They suffered casualties from artillery battery, so that is minus two. And they are three casualties over their stamina. That's minus five from this roll. So we need to roll high. No, so that's a three. So they are whipped as well. So they will be retreating backwards off the table. So they select some um, positive end to the shooting phase on turn six for the Confederates. That could be quite interesting for the next few couple of turns. Okay, so over to turn six for the Union. So this is the end of turn six summary for movement for the Union. So Broadhead had a few decisions to make. Obviously, we've got this um, artillery here. So he decided to dismount one of his the front regiment and just skirmish forward. So there's screening there. And he brought the rest of his uh, cavalry around here, knowing that Ashby's unit is going to be off for the next to go. They have to retire that way. So he should clear a path this way. Sullivan was a bit slow again. He managed to get a couple of moves off here with the units that are in either Limbered or in March Column. Then he failed his order here, so they're stuck. So Sullivan's slowly creeping this way. And then Kimball, um, obviously he's not done much. He's still holding Pritchett's Hill, which he wants to do. Um, this battery's now retired, whipped. Um, so they're kind of out of the action. And then over here, obviously, these are in a firefight here. So Kimball's in an interesting position because in two turns time, turn eight, he'll get reinforcements coming down here with Tyler, which is another large brigade. So he's just hang, trying to hang on keep these forces occupied and wait for Tyler to arrive and see what he can do. Okay, so over to shooting. Okay, so just, I did this off camera, but these skirmishes fired through here. Did actually get a casualty and a disorder. So now that artillery battery is shaken. So that was good for them. And then we'll just do this live. So we've got this battery here firing down. So getting three shots because they're six gun battery and they're hitting on fours. Just the one, but only disorder and one save of six because it's at medium range. No, so that does mean they are now disordered, and also that does mean they are shaken. So Burke's brigade is now starting to waver a bit because we've already got one unit whipped, now one's shaken. One more of these regiments goes, um, then yeah, that, that brigade's broken. That's part of the um, victory conditions for the Union, so that's not bad for them. Over here in the centre, these will be firing across. There's four dice hitting on fours. Wow, great shooting there, four hits there, so four saves of four required from that front regiment. They do make two, but that is two casualties again on, uh, sorry, I'll, uh, I haven't got a die, so I'll just put this on there for now, so I remember. So that is two casualties on there. Okay, then we'll go over to that firefight there. Okay, so this front Union regiment's firing back here, so they are disordered, so they get minus one to their roll, but they are in close range, so they're back to fours. And again, these are large units, so it's going to be four shooting dice hitting on fours. Clearly, they have uh, got their powder wet somewhere, so no hits at all. Okay, so that's a bit tame from them. Okay, that's, that's the end of the shooting phase. Again, there's no hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, so we'll go straight over to turn seven for Confederates. Okay, that's the end of turn seven movement for the Confederates. Um, the big move here was, was Burke. Burke's one of the critical brigades that the Union have got to try and break. 
Um, so if you remember, he was here. So he's managed to basically bring his his infantry back off the line in Q, uh, that unit as well, just to give him a little bit of space now between him, Sullivan, and this cavalry brigade, and also still under the threat of those guns, which he didn't really want to charge. Has left his guns a bit exposed, but I think it was better to reform the line, get them more organised, and also he managed to then get an order to rally off for casualty. So these these were shaken, so now they're not shaken as well. So just reforming the line, there's still a few turns to go, so no need to panic. Um, he has isolated his guns, but that's... Um, that's the way it goes sometimes. Focus and just staying where they are just to keep the uh, firepower going against them. And then over here, again, Garnet and, and the combination of Jackson and the general reroll didn't get much movement going. Um, did think about a charge, but actually want to try and maybe just soften up this unit a bit more before and got a little bit more movement around um, for these units here. So making progress. It is slow on this left flank. However, um, I think the next couple of turns it's going to start livening up over here as well. So over to some shooting. Okay, so Confederate turn seven shooting phase. So I haven't filmed all of it. So this unit here fired across here, managed to get a casualty and uh, that's made them shaken now. Um, over here, these two artillery pieces fired in at this unit here, but um, failed scoring hits. So what I'm gonna do live is this shooting from the infantry and the cannon into, into there. So we'll do, the, uh, we'll do the infantry first. So it's gonna be three shots hitting on fours. That is one hit there, one save of four required, which they do make. And then we've got the artillery, which is in medium range now, so two shots hitting on fours. With shooting, that's two and two, um, that's a disorder, and two saves of six required. They get one, that's very lucky, so that's no, sh they're no disordered, and that two, three casualties now. Um, it's almost shaken there. Could have done with that, but there you go. And then we'll come over to this one. Okay, so very quickly, so again, three shots on this unit into here. So they are in close range, so they're hitting on threes. So that is two hits, and then two saves of four required, which they do make. So, yeah, so no softening up there. Okay, so that's the end of the shooting phase, and turn seven for, there's no, yeah, there's no hand-to-hand -hand combat. So over to turn seven for the Union. Okay, so that's the end of turn seven movement for the Union. Not a lot happened. Just down here, so Broadhead... Um, what happened here so first of all he dismounted some more of his cavalry and they then came around here to flank the uh, the guns here so he's got a bit of surrounding then he brought the rest of his um, the two tiny units up just here uh, and then Sullivan marched up two of his uh, regiments here then unlimbered that uh, guns there to fire here and then tried to move these up but failed the order so a bit of movement down here put a bit of pressure on these guns once they're cleared out of the way and that does open that corridor all the way down to, to Burke's Brigade there. So that's good. And then no other movement across the board. Turn, turn eight's coming, so Tyler will be coming down here, the new brigade, the reinforcements. So, um, so the Union decent position at the moment on this side of the board. Okay, so over to some shooting. Okay, starting over here. Um, also, I noticed, um, by the way, I know there was a disorder marker here, which I should have taken off at the end of the Confederate turn, which I completely forgot about. So... I've taken it off now. So what we've got here is we've got this, um, got two units of uh, dismounted cavalry, I think can shoot in, and also this uh, this artillery battery here. So they're going to be firing across. These are actually three inch rifle guns with 48 centimeter range. So they're in half range, so that's two dice. So that's going to be hitting on fives because they're not, they're, of, uh, they're deployed. So it's minus one to hit, not a clear target. No hits there. And then we've got f four dice because it's two and two. I'll well, do it all together. These are in close range, these aren't. Um, so that's, I'll do them differently. So we've got fours and fives. So do these guys first. So one hit there, and then we've got fives for those guys. One to two hits, to two saves of four required. One to one casualty. So they will be testing at the end of the, the shooting phase, if I can remember, um, to see what happens to them. So then we'll come over to the center. Okay, so this unit here will be firing across. It's four dice because of a large unit. They are disordered. So that's going to be uh, four dice hitting on fives. Just the one hit and one save of four required. Which they do make some more casualties there. Okay, um, got these guns here, which I'll just do. Okay, so that's just one dice down onto uh, Burke's, the front regiment here. So just one dice hitting on a five because it's at long range doesn't hit, and then we'll go over to that unit there. 
Okay, so again, four dice for this large unit shooting in here, at close range, so hitting on threes. Just the one hit, so the shooting's not been great uh, this turn. So four, no, they don't make it, so that is one casualty, but um, could have been a lot worse. Okay, so that's the end of the shooting phase. So we'll just go over and do that um, that break test for that artillery unit. Okay, so there's one over there, stamina, so there's two, two D6 minus one. So uh, that becomes nine, becomes an eight, so they're fine. So that goes back to two, so still shaken, but um, that could have been worse. Okay, so that's the end of turn seven for the Confederates, and we're over to turn eight for the Confederates. So that's the end of turn eight movement for the Confederates. Um, not a lot happens, the Burks pretty much staying on station. Uh, doesn't really want to try and get into this gap here and get under the fire of these guns again. So, um, so the main movement, Fulkerson stayed where he was again. So mainly it's now uh, Garnet and Jackson and finally got some decent roll on the orders uh, and managed to get one unit all the way around the back of this Suarez unit and into line and these two units around the side here and into line. So finally this uh, brigade is hopefully going to make a difference to the battle on this side of the flank at the moment. So these, uh, these Union troops here are looking a little bit uh, overwhelmed and outnumbered now. but. Um, the reinforcements are arriving on this turn, so let's see what happens in the shooting phase. Okay, in terms of Union shooting, I've done some off-camera again, so this unit here fired here didn't, and missed, so no shots there. Um, these couldn't fire anywhere. These two artillery pieces fired and missed, but these guys on the end of the artillery there fired in, got two hits plus a disorder, fell both saving throws, so uh, that unit is now shaken because it's salmon of four and one over. So they will be testing at the end of the shooting phase, so that could be critical. And also the muskets fired in but didn't cause any casualties. So that artillery fire was worth it. So we'll come over to the main event over here. So starting here, we've got the, the unit at the front here is going to be firing in again. So they are in close range. Three shots hitting on threes. So that is two hits and a disorder. Two saves of four required. They do make it, but they are disordered again. That could have been better. Uh, this unit here can fire through... The side here of this unit now because of this one's here you're only getting two dice so you normally get three shooting dice just going to allow two um, they're not in close range but they are enfilading which means they're shooting along the line so they'll be able to re-roll missed hits so hitting on fours oh, also they're not a clear target so so yeah because of how they're positioned it wouldn't be a clear target so it's fives so that's one hit on re-roll no, just one hit, and again a four up save. No, so that's another casualty, so almost shaken. And then the uh, unit at the back there, they are going to shoot into the back of the Zwarves. But they're not in close range, so they're going to be hitting on fours. Just the one hit, and save a four required, which they do make. Okay, so that was, could have been better. Um, not the best, but not too bad, so we've got a... Sh a sh uh, they're now disordered and these need to test. So we'll come over and do that test. Okay, so quickly do this break test. So the way it works is it's minus one for one being over one over their stamina, because their stamina are four, minus one for being disordered, and minus one for taking a casualty from, from artillery. So it's minus three off this roll. Need to roll high. Six minus three becomes a three, so they are whipped. So Kimball has lost his first infantry regiment. They're gonna be like the artillery going off the board. So that could be critical. Um, they're just about hanging in there. Tyler's brigade is arriving on this turn for the Union. So let's see how they, they get on in turn eight. Okay, so things are definitely hotting up on turn eight. So uh, first off, Tyler's brigade has arrived. So uh, again, got a decent roll. So got all of his five regiments on the table. Got uh, a couple of Zouave units, a couple of uh, standard, and also a uh, unit, uh, sorry, a regiment in skirmish order. They're again all large units, so they've come on the board heading over towards um, uh, this side of the board. Uh, in the centre here, um, with a really good roll, Kimball just ma managed to get his guns to just swivel around a little bit, even though he's quite far away. He managed to roll a three for his command roll, so that was pretty good. And then over this side, um, uh, Broadhead, the two uh, dismounted cavalry units charged him. They charged him first just to lock them down, and these charged in afterwards, um, which was great. So that's, uh, that worked pretty well. And then these two dismounted. 
and uh, just moved, well, moved up and dismounted. So they're going to put a little bit of just uh, harassing fire down onto Burke's group there. And then Sullivan managed to just get these two units to come through the gap here, but failed then to get anything else to move. So quite a bit of movement for the, for the, uh, for the Union, sorry. So let's head, head over to a shooting phase, see what happens. Okay, so we're into the shooting phase. So I did this off camera, but these two uh, tiny regiments here that were in um, now basically cast of skirmishers, this dismounted cav, managed to get a disorder and one casualty on that front regiment. So I'm going to film this battery firing in. They, now they've swiveled around, they are in, uh, within medium range, so they're getting three dice, hitting on fours. This could be interesting. No, it wasn't, only one hit. Uh, it's a six to save though, because at medium range. But it does shake them, so that gives them an extra casualty and they are now shaken, so that was worth it. Okay, and then we'll come over to the centre. So we've got this unit firing here, um, into here, so they have four dice sitting on fours. That's a good roll, all four hits. Four saves of four required, and that was a, that was a disorder as well. No, so that is three casualties, so that takes them up to four. Now that is actually interesting because that means now they are disordered and shaken. But also, I didn't move him actually, maybe I should have done that, I forgot. <laughs> um, so Fulkerson actually attached himself to this regiment um, to rally off, a, tr off uh, a, a casualty. So he's technically now still attached and any overspill of... of um, Wounds, uh, sorry, casualties could go to him if I roll a six. So I'll see if the union model six, he could become a casualty. No. <sighs> okay, that could be interesting. Anyway, so that's that's that done, and then we'll go over to this side. Okay, so there's two union regiments. I forgot to mention as well, in the movement phase, this Zouave's unit reorganized themselves because they were in initiative range, so they could move on initiative, so they just basically reformed uh, and facing that way. But we'll start with this unit here that's disordered. So it's four dice again into here, close range. So they're plus one, minus one for being disordered. So that's fours, four dice in on fours. Just the one hit, uh, save of four required. Note, so that they're up to two casualties. And then again, four dice shooting into there. Not, they're not in close range. Um, you measure from the center. So they're just out on the center. So again, four dice hitting on fours. No, just the one hit, and then another save of four required, which they do make, so no casualties there. Okay, so we have got um, a, a break test here, which we'll just come and do. Okay, so if be careful here, so for the commander, so basically got disorder, so minus one, one over their stamina, minus two, so let's see how we get on. So a nine becomes a seven, so they're actually fine, which so that was good news. Put that back to a three, that would be awkward for Fulkerson. Um, okay, so we have got some hand-to-hand, -hand, um, so I'll just do that. Okay, quick summary, because I did that hand-to-hand -hand off, ca off camera. Those two regiments easily defeated the uh, artillery, and they failed their break test, so they're gone. Okay, so that's the end of turn eight for the Union. So it's looking interesting at this point. Let's see where we get to on turn nine for the Confederates. Okay, so that's the end of turn nine movement for the Confederates. Some difficult decisions now, because they're getting very much squeezed now by this big mass of Union coming across the field. Um, so basically Burke decided to, the front regiment here that was uh, disordered and shaken decided to just do disorderly retreat. That's why I've got two disorder markers on. So I know they've got to be disordered on the next turn as well. But best to get them off the line rather than break or become whipped and put a fresh unit up the front. Um, over in the center, um, Fulkerson did the same. So he just brought this unit back off the line. Again, they're disorderly retreated. So I put a disorder marker down, fresh unit at the front. And then over here, uh, Difficult decisions. In the end, Garnet and uh, Jackson decided to try and charge in, uh, but even with the general reroll, they didn't. Uh, because of the minus two command modifier, you get an ACW uh, for charging a formed unit to the front. Um, neither of them got in, so we're stuck in a bit of a firefight here. So we'll have to see how we get on uh, with shooting. Okay, so starting over here. So this unit's going to fire in again to the close range. Three shots hitting on threes. Oh, it's a really bad roll. Just the one hit. It's not good enough, I don't think. Need a four. Oops. Needs to be in the dry stray. No, they didn't make it. So that, okay, so they are shaken. So that is something. So that is something, but they're not going to be testing. But we've got this unit here again. So two dice, again, hitting on fives because they're, they're not a clear target, but they are infilating. So it's a re roll. That's one hit. Just the one hit again. And then save a four. They could do with this to fail. No, they saved it. 
so although they're shaken they're not going anywhere and then we've got the three shots coming in there again from on fours that's better yeah that's two hits uh, and a disorder I'll put that on quickly and two saves of four did they make the saves but they are disordered so um, I come across the center okay I'm filming this just in case it makes a difference so they are just now out of medium range which is one dice here so hitting on a five because it's at long range but they do get a hit and it's uh, disorder as well now it's minus one at that range so it's gonna be a five to save nope so that is a casualty and there is a disorder so that's something and then this unit here is in range so three dice hitting on the fours just the one and then a save of four required nope so that is another casualty okay so it's a bit of a bit of joy over here in the center uh, and let me just check for some other shooting yeah, so these two artillery units can shoot into there. They are within their arcs of fire, but are at long range. So again, I'm going to do it together. So two dice, hitting on fives. No, nothing there. I think that is the end of shooting. I'll just check the range here. Yeah, so Burke's unit here, one of Burke's regiments could fire here. So they just managed to get a hit and they caused a casualty. And also, uh, so they are shaken. I need, to put, uh, I need to put a dice on there. No, it is there. There it is. Just to hit it so uh, and also disordered okay so that's the end of turn nine for the confederates so let's move over to turn nine for the union well that's the end of a shockingly bad turn of movement for the union unfortunately tyler i'm not sure he's getting too excited or whatever uh, blundered i mean literally the whole he had given a brigade order to move up uh, obviously closing on the confederates rolled a double six and then rolled a one so the whole brigade has moved back two moves so that has really hampered um, the Union now in this game, I think. Um, put a quite a distance between them and the, and the, and the uh, Confederates. And down here again, um, not too bad. And Broadhead managed to get his, um, the dismounted cav to move up closer to get start shooting. And Sullivan did get his two units to move closer. But um, these didn't move. Um, they've obviously all stuck there. So, yeah, I'm not sure whether this is going, it's going ahead at the moment. But... Um, Let's head over to uh, Union shooting. Let's see what happens there. Okay, we'll start down here. I did mess my position up, positioning up a little bit because this unit now is too close to this one, so that you have to shoot at your closest target, which is that one. So we'll do the f these two regiments into there. So they both get two shooting dice, so we're going to get four dice hitting on fours. A three hit and a disorder. Start. That's three saves of four. No. Well, wow, that's interesting because that puts them shaken. They are disordered. They have three casualties. That brigade is broken. So that's part one of the unions of uh, what they need to do. But I've still got these, these guns here. So they're going to fire in. And they are in medium range. So that's going to be another three shots hitting on fours. That's another two hits. And two saves of six because it's a medium range. No, so they're actually two of their stamina as well. So that's a st um, stunningly good. Well, the movement was rubbish, but the shooting's been excellent on that turn. So that puts. Uh, so we'll do a test at the end. But that brigade is broken. So um, the Union have had a massive success in this turn now. Um, so we'll head over to the other side and see what happens over there. Okay, so this is firing here. So this unit is shaken, so they're going to hit on fives, back to fours because they're in close range. There's four shots. That's uh, two hits. Two saves of four required. No, so that unit is also shaken. And there's one over the stamina, so they'll be testing as well. And then we've got the Zwarve unit firing that way. Again, they're disordered, so minus one. And not in close range, so that'll be fives. Finally, the Union have turned up with their shooting boots today, so that's three hits and a disorder. Three saves of four. No, so that is also... Wow, this has been a fantastic turn of shooting for the Union. I just need that tree, so we can see what we're doing. They're also shaken. Um, is, yes, there's a bit more shooting in the middle, I'll just do that. Okay, so that's the end of the shooting phase for the Union on turn nine. Um, these shot across and did disorder them, so it's been a fantastic... Uh, shooting phase for the Union turn nine. Let's just see what the results of that are. And we've got a break test to do down here. So it's going to be minus two for the 
for the uh, casualties and also minus one for the disorder uh, plus minus one for being hit by artillery so that's minus four for these guys three so they're they're whipped so they're gone so, but that you that brigade is broken anyway and then over on this side uh, this unit here is one over the stamina so it's just two dice minus one so they're fine so they're back to three so yeah it's not been it's not been a good turn at all for the confederates the union have really poured on the lead um so yeah so now burke's brigade is gone they're broken that's part that's half of the victory for the union ones and also now crucially they've got two shaken regiments down here so one more regiment shaken here and that brigade is broken as well so the confederates are really teetering here as we move into turn 10. okay so that's end of movement on turn 10 so for the confederates so these Burke's Brigade has just done their retirement move, so they'll be off next turn. And over here, the only thing we've got left really is for Garnet and Jackson. So finally, a um, bit more positive. So this unit just retreated on initiative off the line, and this unit moved in, so fresh unit to fire. Um, I've been doing this wrong to, up to the now. So uh, this unit did a disorderly retreat, which I did over here earlier, but you actually have to be in initiative range. I forgot that, but these were. So, so although I did it over here, that was wrong. Don't think it's made much difference to the battle to be fair these have moved back so i put the extra disorder marker on and because these are now freed up these have managed to charge in um easily got in there because they haven't got the minus two command modifier because they're charging the flank and also didn't get any closing fire so this is a bit of a late game attempt to try and at least break uh kimball's brigade so let's move over to shooting okay so we've got this fresh regiment here going to fire in here so they're getting three dice so in close range they're hitting on threes in the bag in the dice tray so that's two hits and a disorder two saves of four required both failed so interesting so they are now disordered and they are going to be testing they're two over their stamina um by the way all i did the shooting over here there was no impact at all so all misses basically so so we might as well go straight on to do that let's see what happens over here so for the break test we've got uh, some minus one for being shake uh, for disorder minus two for being uh over the limits, that's minus three. So let's uh, see what they roll. A nine becomes a six. So that is a retirement move, which means I'll be retiring this way. So I'll do that and they'll be disordered as well when they retire. Okay, uh, so I'll come back and do that and then we'll go to hand to hand. Apologies, a quick addendum. I've just realized that I don't think because these are now engaged in combat that these can move through them because technically they are in combat. So looking at the rules, um, they can't actually make their retirement move, so they're actually destroyed. Um, so they're actually off the field. So that's uh, that regiment's done, dead. Um, so yeah, so we'll come back and do the hand-to-hand. -hand. Okay, so let's get on with the combat. Now, because these are being attacked to a flank, they can only allocate up to half their attacks um, for this. So they've got normally got eight, so that becomes four. And these have got six. So these charged in, so they've got six attacks hitting on threes. These have got four attacks, but because of being charged with flank, it's minus one, they're on five. So we do these first, so six attacks hitting on threes. That is five hits, that's a good start. And he's got four hitting on fives. Just the one. So we'll do their saves now. So five saves of four for the, uh, for the Union. So that is one, two casualties. For the Union and just the one save of four required for notes so that is one casualty for the Confederates um, to be fair they've won I mean these are not these are supported anyway these aren't so I'll just allocate those casualties on there so it's two casualties for that's why we gained one casualty here on these and these will be testing so there's no minuses so just two dice and these need to roll high six no nope, they're going to be retreating as well so they'll be retreating uh, away from combat uh, so i'll do that and come back okay just to confirm after that combat so this unit retreated but these did a follow-up move and advanced on the retirement enemy so then actually back in now combat so um didn't quite do what they wanted to do they wanted to try and break kimball's brigade on this turn but didn't quite manage it now but there is one unit uh, whipped one unit destroyed so there's only got to get one more unit to be shaken or destroyed and then they, that Kimball's brigade's gone as well. So anyway, that's the end of turn 10 for the Confederates, so move over to turn 10 for the Union. Okay, so a summary of turn six movement for the Union. So unfortunately, Tyler 
failed his order. He tried to get his brigade to move out, but um, rolled a 10. So, uh, and with no commander in chief on the board to get a reroll, they're just uh, stuck here on this side of the board. Um, down here, Broadhead, um, some good movement actually, managed to get all that uh, brigade remounted and charged into that artillery battery there with some supports there. So um, some real value in those uh, cavalry, both dismounted and uh, mounted today. Sullivan, again, not particularly great. He's only commemorating seven, so tried to order these. Well, he ordered these first, um, failed his order, and basically they just got their free move to move forward a bit further. So um, not much going on. And then, again, Kimball didn't have much to do other than manage to swing these artillery around a little bit with a, a good roll. So... Um, so that's it. So over for some shooting. Okay, I'm trying to keep things brief now because if it's a long game. So I've done this off camera. So these fired across here, just scored a hit there, and these fired across and didn't score anything either. So that was the only shooting. So I've got two hand to hand combats. I'll do this one off camera as well because it's likely to end up with a, a route for that artillery, and I'll focus on just filming that one over there. So I'll come back for that. Okay, so I suspected that unit uh, from the charge destroyed the artillery there. Then they did a sweeping advance through into the other artillery battery and did the same again. So destroyed two batteries of artillery in one charge. So excellent work from Broadhead. So over to this combat here then. So the Union have got eight attacks because they're a large unit. Um, but they're hitting on fives because they are disordered. And the, the Confederates have got six attacks, but they won the last combat, so they're hitting on three. So we'll do the Union first, so eight attacks hitting on fives. That is three hits for the Union. Now, the last combat, I did forget about um, the Rebel Yell. So um, so they get to re-roll one missed combat here for these guys. So I forgot that in the last turn. So, um, so that is all hits, so six hits. Um, so that is uh, three saves for the Confederates and six saves for the Union, so we'll do the Union first. So here we go, so saves of four. So that's three saves, but again with the Rebel Yell, you can force the Union player to re-roll one of those. So that's three wounds. Um, re-roll one of those. No, it's still, that's still okay, so just three wounds. And then three saves of four for the Confederates. Oh, damn it. Okay, so that wasn't great, so by the way, I'm not biased here by saying damn it. I'm just keen for the someone to win this game. So there we go. So, um, so that's three wounds for, so that's three each. Now, the Confederates are supported. So that's a draw. Um, they are supported. Therefore, um, they do win the combat by one. So we'll apply those casualties. So that's four for them, which makes them shaken. Uh, so it brings them up to four, sorry. Adding three to these, bring these to five. So they're shaken as well, and one over the stamina. Uh, now because these aren't testing, uh, because they've won the combat with this supporting unit here, um, they're, back, they're not testing, so I'll put that back to three. These will be testing, so it's two dice, minus one for the excess casualty, and then minus uh, one for the disorder. So it's minus two. So two minus, four minus two is two, they're destroyed, so that's gone, and that means that Kimball's brigade is broken. Okay, so I'm just going to come back and just have a quick summary of that. Okay, guys, that was the end of turn 10 for the Union and actually the end of the game because actually in that combat, because that unit was shaken there, um, that means there's three shaken units in that brigade. So, that, so unfortunately, Garnet and Jackson's brigade is also broken. Um, so despite Kimball's brigade breaking, um, with Burke down here broken, and with Garnet and Jackson broken, that is actually a victory for the Union. So on turn 10, the uh, Union prevail. Um, so some quick thoughts on the summary. First of all, um, really enjoyed that game. Really, um, first time I've used that many regiments in one game. Um, so that was really fun. Um, I thought the initial deployment, because this was how the scenario was set up, kind of lent itself for the Confederates to come here from this left-hand side and try and sweep round. And I think the, the original idea was to try and get Jackson and the large unit into Kimball early to try and knock him out of the game before Tyler arrived. And then obviously then deal with Sullivan over this side. Um, so I thought that started off okay, but it does show you how hard it can be to manoeuvre very large formations in black powder. 
Um, I think having things in March column helps. So I think once I got um, focus into March column, you know, he made swift advances up the board. But then I think tactically I made a bit of an error by then deploying him here. Should have kept him going, I think, and then brought up the larger Garnet Jackson Brigade into the centre here. So because once they were there and Burke was here, they were a little bit stuck. So probably should have swept them round and probably been a bit braver with maybe Fulkerson because the victory conditions were that if either Burke's brigade or Garnet's brigade were broken, that was a victory. Well, both of them, sorry. Whereas Fulkerson didn't count. So I think he could have been a bit of a sacrificial lamb with his uh, brigade in terms of charging in. Um, just seeing how they get on. Um, but just show you a defended position with uh, on good ground with artillery is very hard to attack in particularly for American Civil War where cavalry is not as prevalent in that respect. So I think these uh, so Kimball really did well. I thought I thought I knew it was a strong brigade, but actually shows you how hard it can be to actually attack a fixed positions. Especially when you had two six-gun batteries, that's very difficult to overcome that weight of firepower. In terms of the Union themselves, I thought, um, oh, Ashby I thought did really well as well. For a small brigade of a couple of cav and a bit of artillery, really did hold at this, uh, this left flank of the Union over this side, uh, who were very slow to get around. And again, you know, it's quite, even though it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not a massive uh, gaming table, to get from over here to this side, you need some good roles. And I think with Sullivan only being command rated seven, there was no commander in chief. Very difficult for him to get his, his units moving. So again, I think once he got him into March column, he was starting to get things moving, but then kept failing some roles over here. So very difficult. MVP for me for the Union was Broadhead. I thought that brigade, that cavalry brigade was really good. I really like tax of tactical flexibility they give you, especially because you can dismount for free and mount for free. So I thought, you know, bringing them over here, dismounting, they caused a lot of problems for Burke initially. Um, and then obviously they are able to mount again and then sweep around and just take out the artillery here. So I really like those, some really good use of those as skirmishers as well as, uh, as cavalry. So I do like that. That's a really nice part of the game, I think. Uh, and Kimball was good. I mean, Kimball's brigade performed pretty well as well. I think the main thing for the Confederates, too much time getting round and getting a little bit all boxed in here into this corner. Um, and then Burke really just, yeah, uh, lost that early unit and then difficult facing all that uh, artillery so a really fun game I mean interestingly you know a whole brigade over here not even used uh, a bit of a farce really I, I think maybe again I should have kept them in March column because what I did was I, they came on in March column and then I, I formed them into line uh, but then with that blunder stuck them over there they missed the command roll so really they were at the game at that point there was not much they were going to do in that game fortunately for them Kimball's brigade was strong enough to hold on and obviously caused the uh, enough casualties over here to, to, to break um, Jackson and Garnet's brigade. So, yeah, fun game. Really enjoyed that. Bit of a longer one for me for, than usual. I hope everybody enjoyed that and you've stayed tuned. Uh, it's been quite interesting. Lots of different things going on. I did forget a few rules along the way. I forgot about the Rebel Yell. The, by the way, the Rebel Yell was not on the cavalry or anything like that. It's, it was only on the infantry. So all these cavalry uh, engagements over here wouldn't didn't matter. So... But overall, I think, yeah, I think I got most things right, so that's the main thing. So, Okay, guys, well, that's the end of that game. Hope you enjoyed it. I've got another things, few things planned coming up, so um, keep yourself safe and catch you all very soon.